county in Georgia that only was paying 60% of the rent due as part of rental assistance now is facing a crisis. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's going over a county in Georgia that was only paying 60% of what was due to the landlords in terms of rental assistance due to the coronavirus pandemic. But before I get into this article, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see on this channel. I'm going to work to keep bringing you articles about the eviction moratorium and other news that's of interest to landlords. So this article that comes from NPR.org and it says Georgia County tried to help everyone facing eviction. Now a crisis looms. Yeah, this shouldn't come as a surprise to many people, but a lot of landlords don't want to take the rental assistance because it is a bad deal for them. And this is a prime example of that in this article. OK, so let me get into it and uh, hopefully it'll explain it a little better, even though it doesn't really say much about the landlord's perspective. I'll throw in my personal opinions and some comments and let you know what I think. Back around the start of the year, Michael Thurmond had a problem. He's the top elected official in DeKalb County, Georgia. Congress had approved about $50 billion to help catch up, or help people catch up and pay rent to avoid eviction. But Thurman worried, excuse me, but Thurman worried that his county wouldn't get enough money to help everybody. What do I say to the family who is, who is the first in line after all the money has run out, he asks. So he and county officials decided to impose limits. Congress authorized more than a year of back rent assistance that would be paid in full. But the county imposed a different rule. It pays just 60% of the, rent, uh, the back rent someone owes. The landlord is supposed to absorb the loss beyond that, or the renter comes up with the difference or something in between. So this guy, you know, he's a politician, right? He, without consulting the landlords or the tenants or anyone, decided you know, oh, well, we're, we're going to not have enough to help everyone. So instead of giving, you know, 100 percent of what is owed, you know, making the landlords whole again, we are going to only give them 60 percent of what is owed, you know. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of them will be out of the kindness of their own hearts. Just forgive all that other debt or absorb it. Absorb it is what they said here in the article. Or maybe the tenants will be the ones who suddenly are able to come up with a whole bunch of extra money out of their pockets when they're unemployed and then pay that other 40%. Well, that was a fantasy, okay? That didn't happen. And instead of that, instead of that, you know what really happened? A lot of landlords were like, we don't even want to participate in this program, okay? We want to get these tenants out of our property. We want to evict them because they haven't been paying. And then we want to sue to recover our losses later on. And that would be 100% of our losses, not 60%. So yeah, this, this county program was put into place without talking to the stakeholders and realizing the issues that it would cause. Either you can help a smaller number of people by providing them greater assistance, or you help a larger number of people by providing them with less assistance, Thurman says. So we took the position that we should help as many families as possible. But that hasn't been the way things have played out. And with a federal eviction moratorium expiring next week, critics say DeCobb has reached a crisis moment. Sophia Kitwana's landlord sticks notes with big red Sharpie marker on her door telling her she's facing eviction and now owes upward of $13,000. When they leave the note by the door, my kids, like, they're wondering, Mommy, what we're going to do? She says, I don't have answers for them. Well, uh, here's a suggestion, okay? You can either go and find a job and, you know, pay as much as you can and hope that the landlord, you know, is willing to accept that payment later. You can move out before you get evicted or you can wait until after the moratorium ends and then get evicted but either way you still owe that debt okay you got to live in this place for free for however long you owe this thirteen thousand dollars i mean it's it's the same as any other debt okay it isn't automatically forgiven so the landlord they need their money so that they can continue to pay their bills 
And if you're not paying it, you know, I, I understand that you have a financial situation going on here, but it isn't fair to the landlord to be the one responsible for your financial situation. Kiwana is exactly the type of person Congress was trying to help. She's a single mom with two teenage kids living in Lithonia, Georgia. She lost her job at a call center when COVID-19 cases were spiking last winter. And she quickly applied when the county's rental assistance portal went live in February. I was probably one of the first people that submitted that application, she says. Finding work again has been hard. She has a back injury and needs a desk job. But after she applied for the rental assistance money, she got no response. I submitted my application at least four different times, she says, and nobody would get back to me. Well, that goes back into the bureaucracy portion of it, okay? So we're talking about um, a different thing here in that they're only paying 60% of what is owed, but on top of that, we still have a bureaucracy issue, which is meaning that they're taking a very long time to process most of these applications and not getting the money to the landlords quickly enough. So landlords, they, they just don't believe that the program works in a lot of cases, and it doesn't work. If it takes you four months to get you know some money, it's not working correctly, okay? And I understand completely why there's so many landlords across the country who do not want to participate in these rental assistance programs. Around the country, many states and counties had trouble getting online systems for rental assistance up and running. Many of them crashed. In DeKalb, the system got hacked. Some programs got bogged down with bureaucratic rules. All these problems have been delaying people getting help. In fact, in DeKalb County, 93% of the money that's been allocated still hasn't reached anybody. The county was awarded $38.7 million and says it has only managed to distribute $2.8 million. So here we had the politician at the beginning saying, we want to make sure we can get the money to everyone, so we're going to limit to the payments to 60%. But meanwhile, the system is so backed up, they haven't even distributed 10% of the money that they were given yet. I mean, $2.8 million out of $38.7 million? I mean, they're doing a horrible job, okay? They could have done a much better job, gotten the money, 100% of what was owed to the landlords who needed it, and a lot of the problems would have been resolved. But no, instead, they, you know, they have this bureaucratic mess going on. They're only giving the landlord 60%. They're discouraging a lot of people from wanting to participate. And this is the result, okay? So we're coming to the end of the eviction moratorium. And guess what? A lot of landlords are just going to say, screw it. I'm just going to file for eviction against these tenants and get them out of there and get a paying tenant in there. Kitwana recently heard that she had finally been approved, but with that cap in DeKalb County, she can only get 60% of the rent she owes. That still leaves her thousands of dollars behind. She doesn't have it, and so her landlord rejected the offer and is on the verge of evicting her. See, see, that's what happens, okay? I mean, who? The, she owed thirteen thousand dollars. So um, ten percent of that would be thirteen hundred. Twenty percent, twenty six hundred. So. Um, that means that he would be short $5,200 of the $13,000 that she owes. And that is a huge amount of money. It's just a lot easier to say, listen, you're still unemployed. You still won't be able to pay. And even if I take this rental assistance, I'll still be $5,200 short of what I'm owed and stuck with a tenant who can't pay. So you know what? Let's just get you out of here instead, okay? They're putting the landlords in this situation and it's making it worse for the tenants and I don't like it. Only thing I want is to get paid and that's all the most landlords want. They wanna be able to pay their bills, they wanna be able to stay financially stable and you know these governments are putting us in this kind of bad situation where we have to be the bad guy. Well, we're not the bad guy. It's the government's fault that all this is happening because of the mess that they created and now we're the ones sit here looking bad. So I, I just want it to get fixed. I don't want all these problems. I don't want people out on the street and most, most landlords don't either. Yeah, um, just a terrible situation. This, this same situation is playing out throughout the country, okay? Bureaucracy and ridiculous rules on the rental assistance and everything else, and a lot of landlords just don't want to participate.